Hey guys, my name is Thomas Brush and I make indie games for a living. Uh, today is, I mean honestly, a video I've been really excited about because I had several of you send me just random sketches of landscapes that you want to put in your 2D games. And so I'm going to take those really simplistic sketches and I'm going to turn those into beautiful landscapes that you could use in your 2D game. And guys, this is just to prove to you that you don't need to be super talented or a genius to be able to make a, a sketch look beautiful for your 2D game. So let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop and get started. So this is basically what we've got here. Um, very simple sketch. Um, and you can see that the individual who sent this to me via email uh, said, this is a tree, LOL. <laughs> Thanks for the, I don't know what that says. Thanks for share. I'm not sure what that says. And then uh, thanks for choosing as well at the bottom there. So I've got my color palette here. I, I put together this color palette really quickly, um, probably five minutes before the video, so nothing crazy here. So that's my color palette. Um, and so what we're gonna do is just start blocking in all of these colors. First thing I wanna do is drag up our little illustration here and we're gonna set it to, let's see here, I believe multiply, yep. What multiply is going to do is it's going to allow us to uh, paint underneath it. So let's start with a background sky color of gray. And let's just come forward. So let's do this. Let's go to our mountains here and try and stay as true to this sketch as possible here. And by the way, guys, to prove even more that it doesn't take a genius or some amazing equipment to make this happen, to make it beautiful. This is all I'm using, guys. It's just a simple mouse, okay? That's all I'm using. I'm not using a, you know, Wacom pen tablet or anything like that. So let's just go ahead and start filling in our color. So I'm gonna pick a color along this gradient here. As the colors move down here, that's the colors that are gonna be used as we move to towards the foreground. So I think I like this color for the mountain, okay? And then let's do this color here, or this mountain here. Let's do a little bit grayer um, color for this mountain. And I'm trying to stay as true to this illustration as possible. So that looks kind of cool. Let's go ahead and put something behind it because it looks like the illustrator here was trying to maybe create some kind of depth or something here. So let's do this. Let's uh, do an illustration of a mountain right there. Pop it down just a little bit. And then hold I on the keyboard and just select that color there. Sweet, that looks great. Okay, so it looks like we have some kind of tree here with like, I don't know, thorns or branches coming out of it. So let's see what we can do with that. I'm just using the lasso tool here to <laughs> select an area here to fill in. And I'm just gonna hold shift and drag a little bit more, grab that one, and then grab this one here as well. Okay, awesome. And I'm gonna just get a very subtle orangish gray here. Do something like that. Okay, so there's our, there's our tree. I'm not gonna worry about the clouds just yet. Let's come forward. And this will be, I don't know, it kinda looks like a lake, doesn't it? So let's go ahead and make this a lake. So that's kinda convenient because that means we have this blue here that we can use uh, to make our lake. So let's just choose this bluish green color. Oh, that looks great, there we go. And keep coming forward. Um, let's see here. So this looks like it's one layer, about like that. That's gonna be this color here, okay? And then we have one more here. Just make it look maybe like grass or something like that. So we could probably just select some of these pieces here for grass. Here we go. Awesome. Okay, all right, so let's just choose a color that's a little bit darker than that blue to the left of the screen, okay? 
So something like, honestly, it needs to be pretty much a foreground color. So something like that. So it's pretty dark. And then we're gonna come forward one more layer and use this little piece here as I guess some instruction about perhaps some foreground elements here. Okay, and let's just grab that darkest blue. Okay, there we go. All right, so how do we make that green look like a lake? Well, that's going to be done with a reflection, and we're going to do that in just a bit. But let's go ahead and make sure that those clouds are replicated as much as possible. I'm not a huge fan of these clouds, but we're going to try and stick to the shape and form that we've been given. All right, so let's do it about right here on this layer, okay? All right. So let's grab this one here, this one here. And just slowly fill in the shapes here. And I'm okay using white for now. I might change it later, but I think that's fine. Okay. All right. And by the way, guys, I'm not like super skilled at mouse illustration uh, today because I got a new Mac. And so my mouse settings are totally different on a Mac. For some reason, it's not as precise as it was with the PC. And so I guess that's just further proof that you don't even have to be a pro with a mouse. You just have to be patient and sort of have a plan um, about how you're gonna do your illustration. Okay, something like that. All right. So we have this very, uh, it almost looks like um, like childish kind of, it, like it's sort of crayon. Uh, so maybe we could lean into that uh, kind of Yoshi's Island. I don't know if any of you have played Yoshi's Island, uh, but we're gonna lean into that sort of childish um, crafty look. So I think I can shrink down our color palette here. Where is it? Yeah, there it is, okay. Let's shrink that down just a little bit here. I'm gonna zoom in. And let's see here, what does it look like if I remove those sketch pieces. Okay, not bad. Really, that's not bad. Um, what did I say, sketch pieces? <laughs> the sketch, the, the actual sketch, let's remove the sketch. What am I talking, I'm not even, I'm not making sense today. Anyway, <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go ahead and add in some gradients to this illustration, okay? To make it look like there's fog and mist. You guys know I love fog and mist. So the first thing I wanna do is take these clouds here and let's have them have a gradient. Oh, let's see here, one sec. Go to our basic gradients here and we're gonna choose this black one and just sort of subtly do oh. something like this, okay? And then we're gonna duplicate this and we're gonna add a motion blur. Yep. There we go, something like that and then duplicate it again. Whoops, duplicate it again and then shrink it down. So we just have these clouds hanging out over top. And I think they're a little too vibrant. So what we're gonna do is try and, uh, let's see here. That looks about what I want. Very foggy. That looks awesome. And we're gonna add just a subtle detail to the background here. Um, something like this. Of just a very subtle landscape in the background. Something like that. Okay. And drop down the opacity. Good. Now let's add some fog to this here. And remember guys, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know that I like to add some fog just using the color in the background. Okay. So if I take this color here and then do a pulse or a gradient up like that, it makes it look like fog. And then I just cut in some pieces here. Okay. Something like this. Okay, delete that and then do a motion blur. Yep. And same for this one here. We're going to take this color right here and then do a pulse upward like that. There we go. And then just cut some pieces. There we go. 
and then do a motion blur to the right just like that so now you can see we have this sort of foggy beautiful landscape and guys we're getting the generic forum down here we're not trying to make it look super specific yet we just want to get an idea of what this landscape looks like what the colors look like and then we're going to start adding detail to it <sighs> all right so this this was a lake right and so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to take everything in the background just for now okay we're going to change this later, but I'm going to take everything everything in the background for now. I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste a reflection onto this, okay? Now, the reason why we're doing this, even though we haven't actually finished up, you know, the, the detailing here, because you would expect I finished the detailing and then I put the reflection in. But the reason I'm doing this now is to just remind myself that this is a lake, okay? So I'm going to do a motion blur. Now, Bob Ross will tell you, do a motion blur down. It's going to make it look like a reflection. He does that all the time. So that is exactly what I want it to look like. So there's our reflection. Okay, let's maybe shrink the size a little bit so you can really tell that there's a reflection there. And I wonder if I could crank up the contrast because I can't fully see the details. Mm -hmm. That'll do it for now, just for now. And then I'm gonna just slowly erase there so it looks like sort of faintly moving in okay so that's gonna be our lake just for now it's not perfect yet but it's just for now and then we have this here this is our grass so I want to remind myself that it's grass the way I remind myself is make it look like grass <laughs> what am I talking about uh, what am I trying to say I don't even know what I'm trying to say I'm gonna make it look like grass all right so <laughs> let's do this really quick let's just sketch some grass and do something like this. Then we're going to fill it in. Okay. And, you know, I don't think we need to add... Hmm, we could probably add some fog to this here. But I don't see any point to adding fog anywhere else. So let's just add this... Some bluish fog here. And really get some details. So it looks like there's a whole layer of fog right here. Let's do a motion blur to the right. Okay. So zero. Good. There's our fog. And let's see here. Now I think we're ready to start adding some detail. Okay. So I'm going to add some trees to the mountains. They don't really look like mountains, do they? Um, so I think what we could do is just start adding trees to these mountains. So let's go ahead. And we're gonna use our lasso tool here. Just do something like this. Okay. And you know, I always end up not liking the colors that I've chosen, and that's okay. Um, so we're gonna end up probably tweaking these colors significantly. Um, whoops, that's okay. Hold Alt or Option if you're on a Mac, just to erase. And just gonna add some trees here okay there we go oh and looks like it's time for me to tell you guys about this video sponsor which is Squarespace believe it or not I've been wanting Squarespace as a sponsor for so long mainly because Squarespace is awesome <laughs> I've been using Squarespace for I think six years um, both my websites thomasbrush.com and atmosgames.com where I host my games and my portfolio my resume all that cool stuff is hosted on Squarespace it was created with Squarespace Squarespace is cool because you can look amazing you can have custom designs and pretty much do anything you need to do um, for your business or your own personal brand all with Squarespace and you don't have to know how to code so if you guys are interested in creating a website um, with Squarespace click the link below squarespace.com slash Thomas brush and use the promo code Thomas brush for 10% off yay yay I love Squarespace I really do <laughs> All right, so we have these beautiful trees sort of hanging out here, uh, pointing into the sky. I like it. I like it a lot. Cool. 
and watch this guys this is this is what's really cool you can easily just do something like this okay just select um, let's see something like that okay and then all you got to do is just take a color that's just a little bit darker than this orange okay so something like that and then just do something like this do that so now we have drop the opacity down significantly so now we have these trees and I can even duplicate them and then flip them and now we have this really cool looking tree line here maybe one down here as well okay merge those together and just drop down the opacity significantly just so you get a subtle hint that there's some trees there okay all right so one of the ways that we can make this look uh, more like a lake is we can actually take this color here okay this one right here and I can start adding in inlets um, doesn't really make sense does it so let me try and explain with my mouse right uh, let's <laughs> bring in an inlet here like that and it'll have trees on it like that and I think we can do another inlet right here and this is gonna have trees on it as well okay something like that and then just fill in the coloring here um, that looks pretty good yeah that looks a lot better this probably needs to be something like a little bit more distinct so something like this yeah there we go and you know what's fun is <clears throat> when I'm doing illustrations it's almost like an emotional roller coaster because I'm looking at this right now and I'm like I'm gonna have to do a new video because this looks like junk but I know I've been doing this for so long that I know, I know that at the end of this video, I'm actually gonna like what I see. Um, so you kind of just have to, I guess, trust in yourself a little bit um, and know that it's gonna be okay, right? So don't panic, just keep going. All right, so let's go ahead and cut flat. What makes things look like water is having it do a nice cut that makes it flat, okay? Something like that. Stretch this over just a little bit like that. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. And then we'll do one over here as well. Just a little inlet. So something like something like that. Okay. And then just draw some trees going up the inlet there. Okay. There we go. Awesome. Okay. The other portion of this that doesn't look exactly like a lake is I think. Yeah, it's this piece right here. So I would I would say that it probably needs to cut flat like that. Yep, that looks a lot better. Now it looks more like a lake, and e you could even draw like a little island here. So something like this, a little island. Mm, let's see here. Now let's just add a boat. A boat will inform the reader, not the reader, <laughs> the viewer, that this is indeed. This is a lake, right? So let's just go ahead and grab something a little bit darker than that blue, something like that. There we go. Shrink it down. And hey, let's do two boats. Transform, flip horizontal, something like that. And then maybe one bar back here and lower the opacity. Okay, so there are our boats. It doesn't look half bad. It does, it really does look half bad, but just trust me, it's gonna look good. All right, let's go ahead and add some trees to this here. There we go, so just do what we did with the other layer of trees, something like this, okay? There we go. Awesome. And we're gonna do something like that. That looks great. Okay. Merge those layers together. And let's see here. I think we, what we could probably do is duplicate these clouds. And why not just bring them 
And they should probably be flipped, honestly. Yeah, that's what I thought. Flip the clouds. Flip these as well. And then we're going to do a big motion blur for these down here, just to make it look like fog. There we go. There we go. That looks a lot better. Just to add some depth here. And let's do one behind these trees here. Sweet. I like that. And then duplicate it up here. And I want to flip them to about right here. Stretch them out. Scale them up a little bit. There we go. Something like that. Oh, I love that. And I'm going to go ahead and actually just decrease. Make them pretty dark. Yep. And do one motion blur here. I love it. Okay. And then this tree here, you know, it's not, you know, visible enough. So one of the things we need to do is probably bring it above the clouds. Here, one sec. Let's do this. I'm just going to bring it to there. And then I'm going to fade out the bottom of it. There we go. And then I'm going to add a dark gradient on the top. There we go. And then do one more. So it's sort of got a shadow at the top. I think we could probably go a little bit more like this. There we go. That's what I thought. And then do that vibrant blue. And honestly, not as vibrant. So something like this. Just a very subtle vibrant blue. And then a full one up here. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Drop down the opacity. Okay. So far, so good. One of the problems we have here is there's a, a, a very quick layering um, that occurs. You have very vibrant and then it just goes straight to gray. And that's a big no-no. That kind of confuses the brain. So this layer back here needs to be a little bit more vibrant. You can barely even see it. So we're going to drop up the opacity here. And let's go ahead and just add a layer on top of it. All right, let's see here. And we're going to add that orange, that vibrant orange on top. There we go. And honestly, I'm going to cut away some of this. So something like this, and then one like this. OK, and then cut, 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 cut. Oh, that looks a lot better. And honestly, I'm just going to, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to delete this layer back here. I don't like it. There we go. OK, so we have this layer here. I don't know what that is. Remove that. Um, and what I'm going to do is take some of this gray on the right side like this. Just do that. Yeah, the real problem was on the left side, so I feel a lot better now. Um, also, this is a inverse uh, inverted rule here. It sh things should get lighter as they go back. So we, sh we should sort of uh, Let's see here. Take this and just subtly fade it out like that. There we go. And let's do some dark mountains in the background about right here. Okay. Awesome. So something like this. And by the way, I'm on the screen on the right. Um, what I'm looking at right now, I'm not looking at my Mac. I'm looking at another screen. It's a much smaller image. And so it helps me get an idea of the composition. And obviously, you know, the composition is pretty much set by the artist who did the sketch. Um, but I can try and make the composition work in my favor with some tweaks here. All right. Oh, that looks awesome. I like that a lot, actually. That's really creepy. And drop this down to about right here. What I mean by drop down is fade it out a little bit. And we're going to take this, uh, these white clouds here, and I'm going to add some darkness to the tops. I don't know why, but that's just my gut. Or the bottom, maybe? Yeah. There we go. Okay, let's add some detail to this tree here. All right. So I'm going to merge all of the layers for the tree together. And what I'm going to do is add some, let's see here. Just gradients, subtle gradients to make it look like there's bark. Okay. So let me show you how I do that. There we 
we go, something like that. And I'm just going to do a dark pulse from the left to the right here. There we go. Drop down that. Okay. Okay, we're, we're getting there. And then let's just assume our light is coming from the. Where's the light coming from? Our illustrator let us know. What did he say? Ah, there's a sun over here. Okay, so we need to add a moon or a sun over there. We're going to use the elliptical tool. And I can go ahead and get rid of my color palette. We already have plenty of colors to pick from now on our screen, so I'm not going to have that. And let's just go ahead and put the sun or the moon right here. I'm going to just, because I'm insanely particular, I want it to be right here. Okay, I'm going to cheat. Let's do a white. There we go. Copy that really quick. Let's just move it here because I'm, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to make it look like it's behind this cloud here. I'm going to take this and just do that and do a subtle fade out. See that? So now we have this sun, or I think moon is probably a better, uh, probably a better way to go about this. So the way we're going to do that is just do a subtle pulse. I like it bright. We're going to do a little bit brighter, and then we're going to do a nice bright glow here. Okay? Just like that. Awesome. All right, we have our moon. Therefore, the light is coming from the left side, not the right. I usually put my light on the right side, so this is a welcome change. So we're going to have a glow of, let's see here, white coming from over here. Very subtle. Honestly, we don't need that. What we need is darkness, right? So we're going to do something like that. Okay, there we go. And what does that mean? It means there's also going to be some highlights on the left side of the tree, something like this. And we can also try and fake some highlights. What I mean by fake is just very lazily draw some highlights on this tree nothing too crazy the tree is in the background so i don't really you know focus on details in the background as much as i would the foreground so it's going to be very simplistic so there are our details and that just makes me want to add a shadow or a low light right about here okay take some black and do it like that and then just pop Pop it away. Don't make it look so vibrant. Okay, so we have our tree. Well, now we have this tree, right? And it's got lighting on it, but nothing else in the scene has lighting on it. So let's go ahead and add some lighting to the scene. Okay. Now, again, colors, not my favorite. That's okay. So we're going to tweak the colors in a bit, but right now I just want to get the lighting down. So this tree, I want it to be casting a huge shadow like this there we go like that that's awesome whoopsie well oh, whoopsie whoopsie there we go so we have this beautiful shadow being cast across this giant there we go there we go nice shadow what's going on here that's kind of weird well now we know where the light's coming from we can actually just go ahead and Take this color here and just start adding some darkness. There we go. That looks awesome. Okay. Yeah, so once you get an idea of where the lighting's come from, coming from, you, you can really start working with your colors and tweaking it to make it work for you. I know that doesn't make any sense. But anyway, I'm going to save this scene out. And guys, I just want to let you know, by the way, uh, I have an online course that teaches everything you need to know about game development, and it's called Full-Time Game Dev. And so if you guys want to take a look at that, um, that would really mean a lot to me. There's a link in the description. And if you guys just, you want to get some free goodies, that's fine. Uh, you can get a free 2D game kit. And that game kit's going to allow you to take illustrations like this and put it into a video game. So feel free to click the link below. Um, that would really mean a lot to me. And I have a feeling you're going to at least get some, some use out of it. So feel free to click below. All right, so now we got to figure out, you know, I think we 
let's see here. I think we should probably just create some trees that are pretty dark right here because now we know where the, the light is coming from. So I'm going to put some trees right here. Okay. And give me like a blue shadow, something like this. With a motion blur. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So now we know where the light's coming from. So we can... There we go. There we go. Do the same for this one here. Okay. I'm going to merge these layers together. All right. And just do a shadow here as well. Okay. And like I said, guys, we're going to be doing a lot with the reflection in just a second. Um, but for now, I just want to get the detailing and the lighting done for everything else. Okay. All right. So the boats here, we'll probably scale those up just a bit. There we go. And drop this one down. It, there wasn't enough change in scale. Um, and I think that, honestly, the composition isn't great. So I think we could probably do something like, yeah, that's a lot better. There we go. Take this one and uh, we just delete it, okay? And then just faintly, there we go. Make that fade into the background a little bit better. And also just go a little bit more dark. So let's take that color there and do something like that. Oh, that looks a lot better. Okay, this color here is kind of driving me nuts. So we're going to darken it a little bit. Do something like, yep, yeah, there we go. And then this color here, we're going to take this really dark foreground color. Oh man, it's starting to look good. I told you. I told you it would. There we go. Just got to trust your, uh, your experience, you know? If you do this long enough, you start to learn that you'll be okay. You'll make it work. You'll figure it out. All right. I'm going to cut into this shape here and create some cool looking vines. Anything that looks like, oh, that's not really the shape of a tree. That's not a natural shape of a tree. I'm going to use vines as an excuse for the shape. See that? So now we have these vines sort of coming down this tree. And it makes the tree look like it has a little bit more of a natural shape. Let's see here. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And this could be more of a root right here. Something like that. See? Maybe cut a little piece in right here. Okay. And this branch here could probably be cut something like that. With a little hole right here. There we go. Hey, why don't we go ahead and add some details here? So something like this. There we go. We have some vines sort of chilling out here on this beautiful, beautiful tree. Awesome. Drop down the opacity and then just do some fading right here there we go so now we have these beautiful vines coming out of this tree and you know to make this composition make a little bit more sense to me um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna merge all these together copy it copy this little tree here and I'm gonna paste it and do one more back here let's see where would it where does it better make sense I think it makes sense about right there and I'm going to flip it. I know this doesn't make sense from a lighting perspective because now the light's coming from the right side of this tree. That's okay though. So I'm just going to drop down the opacity significantly. I'm going to make it look like it's sort of flying into or reaching into those clouds there. There we go. And one there. And now we have this tree chilling back in the background like that. Now you'll notice that it doesn't kind of work. Um, so what I'm going to do is there we go. Okay, you probably, let's see here. I think putting it right there is probably a better idea. And I'm gonna just increase the opacity just a tad. There we go. Let's add a flock of birds. 
I don't know why, but my beard is wet. Anyway, <laughs> let's add a flock of birds, okay? So just little dots. So I'm just gonna simply drag some circles with my lasso tool. Maybe some bigger ones here. There we go. And I'm gonna take this dark color here. Here we go. Okay, and then just to make sure everyone knows it's a flock of birds, I'm gonna make it look. Just a few of them, make them look like they're actually birds or bats or something. There we go, something like that. And then you can notice that you can't really see the ones at the top there. So we're gonna use the gradient tool to make it a little bit dark there. Whew, that looks awesome. Hey, let's go ahead and merge a lot of these layers together. Um, you notice things are getting a little bit complicated in my layering. And I'm not a huge fan of the colors. I'm gonna try and blend them together a little bit more. There's a lot of changes in color that are very, uh, what's the word? a little bit too quick. So I wanna blend them into the background a little bit more. So I'm gonna take these colors here, or take these layers here. I'm just gonna merge everything together. Um, I'm a huge, okay, so my natural predisposition is to like work, 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 not focus on any of the, you know, uh, on being clean and precise and organized. That's not my personality. But just cause it's not my personality doesn't mean that I don't work on it. Um, so it goes against my my predisposition to clean up the layers here um, and get organized. And maybe that's true for a lot of you guys as well. Um, but what I recommend is even if it goes against your personality, just go ahead and clean up, get organized. Um, don't rush because you're going to need all of these layers to be a lot cleaner, especially when you go in and start uh, cleaning up the coloring. Okay. So first off, you know, this one here, that's a little too distinct. There's a, it's too quick for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a layer on top of it. I'm gonna try and blend in those colors just a little bit. See that? So the blend is a little bit more natural. Um, that's fine, we're gonna lock that layer. I wanna touch, or <laughs> touch, uh, let's see here. Yeah, that's good, okay. I'm gonna grab this layer here and I'm gonna try and blend a little bit in the background as well. Whoops. Let's try and figure out which layer that is. Not that one. There it is. So let's just add a layer on top of it and do a subtle faint fade. Okay, and then just remove. There we go. That looks good, and then that one as well over here is a little bit too quick for me to change so I'm gonna just do something like this okay there we go and I hope I'm making sense when I say that change the change in coloring needs to be a little bit more smooth um, so that looks good this cloud is kind of bothering me here I knew that when I started this illustration the one thing that was gonna bother me was the clouds um, so I think oh man I might just cheat and do something like this yeah okay that's a lot better all right that looks good um ah, Thomas whatever I'm gonna just take that out I might revisit the clouds the clouds were the main problem that I was having about five minutes ago that's why I was feeling a little bit insecure um, was it was just the, the way that the clouds look and so I'm gonna remove those clouds for now and also this looks a little bit weird as well there's a very quick shift in color so I'm gonna blend a little bit better here so like this yeah that looks better maybe pop it up above there we go and drop down the opacity just a little bit okay that looks a lot better um, there is let's see here this is a little too quick as well in terms of the shift of color so I'm going to just blend a little bit better here so blend like this like that and then maybe blend over here to make it look like there's a little bit more shadow. Okay, and then you can see that we have this weird coloring here. I don't need that layer, we're just gonna, actually let's put it in the background. Let's just move it back here. And then we're gonna do a color overlay and do it very similar to the color here. And then drop down the opacity significantly. There we go, something like that. Maybe a... Uh, 
that looks good. That looks good. Okay. And I don't know. Let's just cut out a few little pieces here. Just to add some details. Yeah. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Save that out. And let's see here. What am I... Ah, the reflection. That's what was bothering me. Okay, so now that we have this lake here, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding reflections. Instead of just, you know, copying these trees here and flipping them, I'm just gonna draw them in. I'm not gonna be too precise here, like that. And I'm gonna take this color here, do something like that. Maybe take some of that orange. There we go, drop down the opacity. Whoops. And then maybe do a... Uh, let's see here. There we go, that looks a lot better. Something Bob, Bob Ross always does when he's doing this is he actually adds a subtle, just a white line to indicate that there's some kind of shore there. Um, so let's see if that works. I think it does. Let's do a motion blur. And it's gonna be at zero, there we go. And then do an overlay. There we go, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? All right, save that out. And we're gonna do a reflection for this as well. Um, so, just take that, like so. And do a pretty dark color like this. There we go. And I just kinda want it to look like a reflection here. Let's see if we can make this work. Reflections, motion blurs always go down, so 90 degrees. There we go. Drop down the opacity, like so. See that? Ah, yes, that looks good. Save that out, and then we're gonna do a shoreline for this as well. So you just take, and your shoreline should sort of always move to the right. So I add little pieces like this to make it look like it's flat. See that? All right, so there is our shoreline. Let's grab the white from the moon, pop it in, do a motion blur to the right. Zero. There we go, and then you just do an overlay, okay? There we go, something like that. Save it out. This color needs to be a little bit more yellow towards the bottom to match that shoreline. There we go. Whoops, let's see here. Hmm, let's try and figure this out. Yeah, it's a little, a little weird looking. I'm fine with it, it's okay. All right, save that out, and then we're gonna add one more reflection, or two more reflections here. Uh, the left island and then the right island, so I'm just gonna take this and just add a little reflection here, okay? There we go. Let's add a little bit of darkness to it. There we go, that looks great. All right, motion blur down, 90 degrees. And then finally, just a little bit of a shoreline. And I can't wait to actually do some color shifting here because it's really gonna make this whole image just pop. Right now, the colors aren't perfect, and that's okay. Motion blur to the right, right, <laughs> and we'll do a zero, there we go, and then overlay. Drop down the opacity, there we go. And I think I could add some darkness to indicate more of a shoreline here. So let's take this color here and then just pop it up just like that. There we go. Save that out. And we need to do reflections for the boats as well here. And let's just do a cut to indicate that they are actually sitting in the water. Um, so let's take this boat here, copy it, paste, transform, flip uh, vertical, 
not horizontal, vertical. Do a motion blur down, right? At 90 degrees. And then let's see here. You could probably shrink it down. Here we go. So there's that one. Um, like that. And then let's see here. One sec. There we go. And then do it. You could probably shrink it down and do it like this here. Okay. And flip that one. Transform, flip, horizontal, right? Good. Merge these layers together. And we'll decrease the opacity of the one on the right here, like that. Save that out. And we're gonna do just a white, subtle water here. See that? Same here as well. And just, we're gonna add some glistening. Water here. There we go. Do a motion blur. What is it? To the right. So zero. And then do an overlay. See that? So now we have a pond or a lake. Looks pretty good. I don't mind it. Um, let's add a little bit of a shoreline over here too. Uh, shoreline here. We don't. I don't think we really need a reflection, so we're just going to add a little bit of a shoreline over here. Nothing crazy, right? There we go, and then do a motion blur. Save that. Honestly, this looks weird to me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. Let's see if I can fix this. I think I can. Um, do something like uh, something like that. Maybe add a little bit more details for these trees. Okay. Yeah, it's just it. Something's not right about it, so I'm just gonna try and fix it with just some subtle detailing here. Shrink down the size like that, maybe. Yeah, and then just. Okay, okay. I think I got it. Come on, Thomas. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Some of you might be wondering about the Jeb cam. Um, I don't have enough USB ports on my new Mac. Surprise, surprise. So I need to get an extension for it so that I can actually use my Jeb cam um, for Jeb, my dog. But he's sleeping. He's sleeping over on the bed behind me. Um, so he's here. He's here with us. I'm gonna duplicate that one more time and just try and make it look just like, I don't know, a, some shadows or something. Yeah. When in doubt, just put some shadows around. That looks kind of cool. Save it out. And let's see here. I wanna go ahead and add a foreground element. Okay, watch this. I'm gonna take this tree and I'm gonna bring it to the foreground. And I'm gonna sort of wrap my scene. There we go. In some darkness. You know I like doing that, so. Let's go ahead and add. Whoa. Add some darkness here. There we go. So something like this. And then one more over here. Okay, save that out. And I'm gonna add a little bit of grass here. That looks good. Save that out. And I think what I wanna do here, I wanna do some color correction. So what I'm gonna do is actually go to my very top layer here, add on a color balance um, filter here. And let's see if we can shift some of the coloring. Kinda like that greenish color. Um, hmm. I love shifting towards warmer colors. That's always what I do. It's, it's just, I don't know, something. That kind of looks cool. I like that. Yeah. And then we'll do a color correction or a colorize filter. Increase the saturation and do a pulse. That kind of looks cool. Hey, I like that. That's really 
cool. Drop down the opacity for that one. Like that, that looks cool. And drop down the opacity for this one as well. Okay. Let's see here, let's zoom out. Mm, not so sure here. just removed some of that color shifting from the lake. This is just a test to figure out what's going on. What's bo Something's bothering me about it and I don't, I'm not sure what it is. Let's go into our lake here and increase the, make it a little bit brighter, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put a white layer on it. and then do an overlay. Okay, something like that. And then now, put those colors on there. Looks a little bit better. Looks a little bit better. And the background here, um, let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna remove these really quick. The background here, I think what we could do is we could add a pulse of orange just going up from the bottom. So something like this. to add a little bit more blending. Okay. Something like that. Good, 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 good. And then a pulse of blue across the entire thing. Just to blend that blue in just a little bit better. Something like this. Good. Okay. There we go. All right, that looks a lot better. I like that. That's cool. The, let's see here. I think the last thing I wanna do, I think I'm comfortable merging all of these layers together, to be honest. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and merge everything together. I know, you know, what's crazy is the colors have completely changed since the beginning of this video. Like, <laughs> completely changed. And guys, that's okay. That's totally fine. Um, that's just what happens. I think I want to choose, let's see here, a color that's the opposite of that pink or that purple um, to sort of fade from the top. So let's just do this. Let's do something like this. Let's see here. There we go. And then crank up the saturation. And we're going to do something like, oh, we're so close, guys. That. There we go. Whoa! What just happened? We are so close. Hold on one sec, guys. I love that red, though. So what I'm going to do is... There we go. I think something like that. No, Thomas, what are you doing, man? Okay. I like that better. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, that looks great. Then, you know, the final touches that I like to do. Um, I like to go to my browser. I go to pexels.com. I find the paper texture. And I just plop it on in, and this is a way to make it look amazing, just with a very simple texture, right? Let's see here, there we go, so. Okay, so we have our texture, we have some tweaks in color and changes to the original palette, and that's okay. Now that we've got all that in, what I'm gonna do is drop down the opacity of that texture. I'm gonna merge everything together. And now, now we're gonna go ahead and add in some detailing, okay? Specifically, I think some detailing for these trees here. So maybe some little vines here. This, right? 
some very subtle vines. The foreground should really be more detailed than the background. And so you really want to be careful. If you ever if you ever confuse like something something seems off. It doesn't feel detailed enough. It's probably because your foreground is not detailed enough. Okay. So we're just going to add in some vines, just some weird shapes here and there. Um, take this color. There we go. Drop down the opacity. See that? Notice how it just changed everything? All right, and then why not add in some stones here? Or maybe just some grass. In the foreground. There we go. And when in doubt, guys, hey, Add some sun shafts. When in doubt, <laughs> add some sun shafts, right? It always makes things look just a little bit prettier. So there's one there, do an overlay like that, like this, right? And then just duplicate them and move them all over the place. I like to add like a triple overlay there, see that? Oh man, that looks good. Oh, Thomas, that looks great. When in doubt, add sun shafts. Drag that one up just like that. Am I going overboard on the sun on, sun on the, what am I trying to say? Am I going overboard on the sun shafts? I think I am. Let's delete a few. Hey now, that looks great. Merge these layers together, do an overlay. There we go. And then, hey, why not do one that's not an overlay, but has some color to it? So colorize, saturation, drop down. And let's do, that yellow looks cool. But I think that orange is probably what we wanna do. And then just, whoops, drop. So let's do this. See what kind of blend mode looks good. That looks pretty sweet. Kind of like that one. Let's add some depth just really quickly to this right here, okay? So the way I'm gonna do that is just add in just a few trees. Like so. So we're gonna do one here. And this is just gonna be some highlighted tree tips, tree tips, right? Invert the selection and then just do a, just a pump, just a very subtle pump of shadow right here, okay? And then fade out the bottom there, just like so. Maybe drag it a little bit like this and then decrease the opacity. There we go. And one here as well, okay? Maybe we can move one over here. Uh, let's see. Drop down that opacity. Sweet. Look, notice how I'm just adding detail just by duplicating that layer. Oh, I like it. Maybe one dent right here as well. Okay, that's fine. And then remove some of that. There we go. Save that out. Now, I think there's one problem here. There needs to be some kind of subtle mountain in the background. It's just something's driving me nuts here. So let's go ahead and some kind of mountain right here. Something like that, okay? Just very, very subtle. Drop down the opacity like that. I think that's it, I think that's the one. And then decrease here. Something like that. Hey now, you're an all-star. Look at that. That looks great. Hey, let's add another one. Hey. 
hey, we forgot about one thing. This, guys, this is where things get exciting. Okay, are you ready? The, I, you know, I'm looking at the clock, I'm like, this. I'm already an hour over, or I'm already at an hour, I wanted to do this in 30 minutes. But one of the things that I love to do is I love to add spotlights, little, little lights coming from various locations to make it look like there's like lampposts and stuff. So the first thing I do is I just add dots. Okay, watch this. So we're gonna add a dot to maybe, maybe the shoreline, okay? Like there's, I don't know, buildings or windows or something. And then maybe one to our little boats here. That looks great. You know what I'm gonna do? Watch this. I'm gonna use the pencil tool. And I'm just gonna create some lights in the background using the pencil tool. Let's grab the color of our moon. It's just a very subtle yellow. And I'm just gonna create like a shoreline of lights, okay? Like that. Maybe we have some up here. A little bit bigger. That, no. You know, I'm trying to figure out where it would come from if it was on a boat. Something like that. Okay. And don't worry, we'll, we'll specify, we'll make it more specific as to like what these are. Um, but I think for now, all we want to do is do a outer glow now. Like that, there we go. When in doubt, Add a glow. There we go. It's gonna have that yellow glow. Oh, I love it. That looks awesome. And then, why don't we just add one more? Just to sort of show, okay, what am I looking at? You know, what are these things? Um, we could probably do, how about a hanging, hanging lantern? So something like this. Oh my goodness, I haven't saved this. Let's save it. <laughs> that would suck if it crashed. Okay, so, um, hanging lantern like so. And it's gonna have like a, I don't know, some kind of top on it. And then you select that, paste it. We're gonna paste a lot of them so that it's fully opaque. And then we just make it white, okay? and invert the color, there we go. And then add an outer glow by just duplicating and then make a big glow, right? Really big glow. Hmm, let's see here. That looks fine to me. Now, this is the funnest part, are you ready? This is what I love to do. What you do is you Drop down the brightness and the contrast significantly, like this. See that? Or just the brightness, drop the brightness down. So it's really dark. And then, you remove that darkness from certain areas that you want in focus, okay? So I think we don't wanna get too crazy Okay, that looks good. This this little light here is kind of weird to me, so I'm gonna remove that one and that one, okay? And then, hey, why don't, why don't we just add just some very subtle, make it look like there's buildings or something, that's what this is. The little buildings in the background like this. Nothing too crazy, guys, just a subtle hint that that's what these lights are. Do one here as well. Okay, and that's just gonna be a uh, simple black. There we go. Drop it. Oh! Yeah, there we go. And then just fade out the bottom of all of those buildings. Yo! Again, just using a mouse here. Save that out, and then what did I say? I forgot to 
yeah, add in our paper texture. Drop down the opacity of that paper texture. Make sure it's an overlay filter. And what's the last thing we gotta do? We gotta sign this bad boy, let's do it. Thomas Brush. There we go. Hey, what did I do? What did I do here? Hold on. Let's just add one more of these up here. Come on. There we go. That. That's a wrap. Thanks, guys, so much for listening to me ramble. And guys, be sure if you liked this video, if you wanna learn more about illustration and game development, click the link in the description, get some free resources at fulltimegamedev.com. And I'll talk to you later. Cheers.